Good morning, folks. We have a little bit of everything here today from episode 14 of our latest cycle series, which came out last night, to going full speed ahead this morning at spaceweathernews.com as we find the last 24 hours on our star with the sunspots departing to the western limb and the large coronal hole swinging through center disk position. With those sunspots now heading out of view, solar flaring is dropping back down. This active region reminded us all that in sunspot minimum, and even in grand solar minima on record, we still get sunspots that come out of nowhere. Starting with the KP index next, because we indeed had a zero day recorded in the afternoon. More than 24 hours of zero KP followed 48 hours of extreme quiet. Folks, while solar flares and geomagnetic storms show dozens of health correlations, it's the KP zero day, quiet sun, cosmic ray surge, that dwarfs all of them in the scientific literature. But luckily, it was struck down just hours after reaching that highest space weather health alert. Up in the second panel, blue shows the phi angle flipped 180 degrees to indicate that discharge connection from Earth to coronal hole. The stream is due up here within about a day, and seismicity is getting interesting as strong foreshocks in the Pacific have been followed by blot echo activity in Mexico and South America. Eyes on that while Mount Merapi in Indonesia sent lava down its slopes, but the top natural story on the planet has got to be the diametrically opposed temperatures in North America and down under. We've reported the Australian heat wave a great deal, and here's that record cold we knew was coming to the Americas. Daily, monthly, all-time records fell across a number of states and in Canada, and it's not done yet. Set to track eastward now. Moving on to one of the teams at NASA who did not jump to plasma universe in the last few years, and yet while studying the processes of active plasma nuclei, they have finally begun including magnetism along with gravity in the disk and jet processes. I will remind everyone that Princeton, Berkeley, even the DOE this week showed us that it's electric current and magnetic fields driving those jets. Give it time. Oh boy, it was a bad day for dark matter scientists, not that they've had many good ones recently. Here we find that the ray of hope from Atlas was dashed by more rigorous accounting from CERN. Sorry, Sensei, yet again this year we have a zero detection on the smaller hypothesized pieces of dark matter particles in terms of their electron scattering and interaction. And perhaps best of all, radio and laser measurements of the wake of the sun as the solar system heads northward 60 degrees from our reference through the galaxy. They are showing absolutely no detection of any perturbation or signal of dark matter meaning our own solar system not only disfavors dark matter, but it helps solidify the galactic rotation problems as being within normal matter physics, not dark matter. Folks, we'll wrap up with a story from the American Heart Association tying stroke, heart and lung disease, and early death to increased levels of small particulate pollution in the local area. Folks, this is why we do the air quality runs on Null School twice a week. During the final music closing of these news here, we'll definitely have that for you today. Today also ends registration for Observing the Frontier 2019. The solar physicists from UCAR return. Douglas Volt of the Diehold Foundation joins the NOVA panel. Climate, earthquakes, pole shift. Last day to register at otf.cells.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps followed by shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.35 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.